In the midst of an international crisis, you may think President Biden would do more than just one sit-down interview with ABC's George Stephanopoulos. But just yesterday, during a news conference on vaccines, the president ignored questions that were being shouted by reporters, because that's what we do when someone keeps walking away from the microphone. On behalf of the American public, we raise our hand, and with all due respect, Mr. President, take a question. Uh, it was about the Taliban taking over Afghanistan. He didn't want to talk about that. We just need to finish the job with science, with facts, and with confidence. And together, as the United States of America, we'll get this done. God bless you all, and may God protect our troops. Thank you. He didn't even look back. Critics torching the president's lack of transparency. President Biden will not answer questions from the media or the press during his gravest and darkest foreign policy disaster. We've really struggled trying to get information and data on what's truly going on there. He doesn't say one word about Afghanistan. Yeah. He is too programmed. He is too scripted. And everybody is now seeing what I've been now talking about for two years, which is this is a president that w you take him out of a teleprompter and his handlers are terrified of what he will say. Brian Kilmeade is co-host of Fox and Friends and host of the Brian Kilmeade Show on Fox News Radio. And we are live now on both, I believe. Brian, good to see you. Exiting is not this president's thing. Uh, you heard Joe Concha describing him as programmed, scripted, I would say robotic, as he turns away from people and walks away. And look at the exit now in Afghanistan. It couldn't have been done worse. I'm embarrassed for this country. We deserve better from our leaders. And I, I look at the Secretary of Defense and the ridiculous comments from the Chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff. No idea this place was going to fall so quick. The Secretary of Defense, no idea how the Americans are going to get home. My goodness, Harris, you're from a military family. When we lose somebody behind enemy lines, we risk our lives to get their bodies back. You're not going to get civilians out of cities where they were helping out. You don't live in Afghanistan to go on vacation. You live to help a hmm. country get back on its feet that we were helping to rebuild. So at the very least, they are ballparking how many people are actually in Afghanistan. How do you know, President Biden, if you got everybody out? And uh, by the way, I want to help everybody that helped us that's eligible for refugee status. I want it. But I think we got to make sure we're pulling out the right Afghanis. We know that's, that's been hard a, to do, though. Have you seen that tarmac? I mean, that I is did. really difficult to do. I, I don't know that we'll be able to successfully vet everybody for SIV status and, and do all of that. But if the choice is to possibly not be able to do that, but get all of the Americans right. that we have, I mean, that is, that is one heck of a binary choice that we, you heard the general, General Kellogg, you can't say no to the Americans on the ground. And it is disingenuous for the Pentagon or the State Department, Brian, to say they don't know who's there. You don't think they have a list? Heck, they have a list of us when we say stuff on Facebook. They're working with, with big tech to find out whether or not we're saying things we shouldn't say. I mean, the administration has already said that. You know they have a list of people in Afghanistan who have American passports. I don't know what's worse, if they have the list and told us they didn't, or if they really don't have a list. And wow. they didn't care enough to do it. Now, think about this. And I've, I've heard a lot of your show, and we've had three hours before I this show, and I've been on 90 minutes here already. So we have a lot of people keep saying to this, and I've not heard a good explanation. Under whose plan do we give up the best base, military base in the country? And when, when General Austin comes out, Secretary of Defense Austin comes out and says, well, I only had enough troops to... Guard the embassy. Hey, Mr. Secretary, you left the embassy. Why did you leave the embassy? Why did you get all of Who our diplomats you? and stick them on the tarmac? Yes. If you had enough to protect them, at least we would have had some type of organization and infrastructure built in. And maybe that's where those names are. Maybe someone grinded up the wrong list when they had 48 hours to bug out. I am so embarrassed about how this is happening and how President Biden says, well, we had to expect this chaos. And it's, well, when someone falls off a plane to their death or is hiding in the wheel well of a cargo jet, well, that was four days ago. No, Mr. President, it was one day ago. And it's never okay. You know that Saigon moment you said wouldn't happen? This is so much worse. Those seem like the good well, old days. Did you hear Senator Cotton? It's worse than that. It's Tehran 1979 when they took over 50 hostages. I mean, that's what his that's what's keeping him up at night.
And, yeah. and by the way, you mentioned Austin. His former boss was just on. That's who General Kelly is, or Kellogg is, rather. And General Kellogg said that as he watched that procession with Austin saying he didn't have enough of this, or he said, well, someone's telling him that he doesn't because he does, and he's forced to take orders from that person. And I said, well, who would that be? Would that be the commander in chief? And he said, yes. I, I want to get to this. Mm. The vice president also quiet on the crisis of Afghanistan as she gets ready to head to Vietnam. The New York Post op-ed is asking, where's Kamala? Harris silent six days amid Afghan pullout chaos. She did tweet twice on the Afghanistan crisis. But remember this, this is what she said earlier this year when the president initially announced his plans to withdraw the troops. Watch. President Biden always said that he wants you to be the last person in yeah. the room, particularly for big decisions, just as he was for President yeah. Obama. He just made a really big decision. Afghanistan. Yes. Were you the last person in the room? Yes. And you feel comfortable? I do. Brian. Okay, you were the last person in the room. So people will say, well, Kamala Harris and those whispering campaigns had nothing to do with this or argued against this move. Oops. In uh, Dana Bash, ask a good question. In April, last person in the room. You know, Joe Biden was wrong about every national security decision and, uh, and foreign relations policy over the last 40 years. And he admits that he was in the room in all those times, former chairman of Senate Foreign Relations Committee. Now Kamala Harris is on the record. Let's be honest. There's nothing that indicate that she's up for this job. And now for the, her staff, who, by the way, hate each other, they were at each other's throats. That is a story that came out not denied three weeks ago, are now deciding to, it's a great idea to go to Singapore and check this, Vietnam, to reassure our allies. What? That when Taiwan gets run over, we won't do anything? What could her message wow. possibly be? What could that message be that could be reassuring? What has she shown that she represent American, so, uh, America might or wants to use it? I have one more. Uh, one of the many jobs that President Biden gave Vice President Kamala Harris was the border. And no, it's not working out. But the big problem with the border and how porous it is now that we're dealing with not just the Taliban, but the second in command there, Al Qaeda, and who knows what that will birth on that soil with scorpions, terrorists coming in from wherever and nesting there. That's our potential future now. Um, why isn't she talking about securing the border? Real quick, she I gotta go. Okay, real quick. Uh, she's got three jobs. To sell everybody on voting rights that the Republicans are taking away. Number two, tell everyone to get vaccinated. And number three, take over the border. Please tell me at what point are we going to see any success or interest in doing her job, except for being a historic figure with an historic background as the first female vice president. She has been terrible. What's worse is when people give you a job, good or bad, do the job. Don't yeah. not show up. We are saddled with this leadership, sadly, for almost three full years plus. Uh, please, to get anyone competent, report to 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue. <laughs> they should be hiring. Wow. Brian Kilmeade, neither one of us has hit a commercial, but we have to hit them at the same time, my yes. friend. Thank you so much. Simulcast yeah. with me anytime. You Good got to it. see you. You got it. Thanks, Harris. Hi, everyone. I'm Brian Kilmeade. I want you to do me a favor. I want you to click to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page. This is the only way that I know for sure that you're not going to miss any great commentary, any great news bites, any great interviews coming your way on Fox. You can get it all here on YouTube. So subscribe right now.